Hello, in this video, we're gonna take a look at using MongoDB Atlas with LLMware. Uh, just as a quick reminder, LLMware uses databases for two primary purposes. The first is just for general data storage. This can be information that's been parsed out of your documents or various runtime data, but also for vector embeddings. And this is in support of semantic search, which is uh, very important for some AI workflows. And very recently, MongoDB Atlas has added support uh, for uh, vector embeddings, both for storing them and doing searches against them. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. So I'm going to quickly switch to my MongoDB Atlas instance. Uh, if you've used Atlas before, this will look very familiar. But I've created basically an empty cluster. Um, it has no databases or collections yet. And really the only piece of information that I need here is my connection string so that I can tell LLMware how to connect to it. Um, so I'm gonna head over to the overview tab. This is one way to find the connection string. Um, on the overview tab, I can hit the connect button and it gives me a few options. If I expand the first option here and scroll down just a little bit, I can find my connection string. So yours should look very similar to this, obviously with just different credentials and different domain likely. So that's really all you need. I'm gonna copy that and keep it uh, handy for the step that we're gonna do in a few seconds here, but that's it. So now let's head over to the LLMware code and start taking a look at what's required there. So here I have the LLMware GitHub repo cloned or forked locally. We recommend doing this just so you have access to all of our examples uh, right at your fingertips. We've recently added an example called using Mongo Atlas, and that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Um, right at the top of this uh, example, it, it, it assumes that you've set an environment variable called Mongo Atlas connection URI and, and set that as your connection string. Um, or you can uh, not do that and just edit this code and directly set it here where the uh, appropriate configuration is getting set. It's up to you, uh, but I've already done that. So I am gonna actually run this example just because it can take a minute or so to complete and then we'll look at the code while it's running and then take a look at the output and make sure we understand uh, what happened. So I'm gonna run this just with uh, Python examples using MongoDB Atlas. We're gonna kick that off and it's running. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the code. I'm going to expand my view here to hopefully make it more readable. Um, so there are some comments in here you can read, which will help you understand what I just mentioned about the um, environment variables, but let's jump into the code. There's really not that much code, um, but what it's doing is it is going to create a library. First of all, our library is going to be called test Mongo Atlas, and we'll see that later when we go back to the Mongo Atlas UI. Um, our library is going to contain a few files. And so you'll see this approach in many, our, many of our examples where we create a library, we download the LLMware sample files, and then we add a, some part of that uh, sample file folder into our library, just so we have some documents to, to test and play with. So that happens. And then the next part is we create the vector embeddings. This is the most important part for semantic search. And so that's done with this call here, library.install new embedding. And we pass in two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is the embedding model name. Uh, this mini LM SBIRT model is a, a very decent uh, model for generating embedding vectors. It's small, it downloads quickly, so that's why we use it in many of our examples. Um, and we're telling LLMware that we want to store those embedding vectors in Mongo Atlas. And so that's really all we need to do there. LLMware will use that connection string that we set earlier and just put those embedding vectors into a new uh, database, a new collection, as we'll see. Um, and then once that's done, then we can start to do semantic searches. So in this case, once the library has been set up, the, the embedding vectors are created, we can just do simple semantic query. In this case, we're, at, we're saying uh, search for salary or anything related to salary, give us back three results, and we're uh, printing out the results here. So let's, uh, let me go back to our normal view here. I think we're almost done. It looks like, oh, yep, the code just finished. So let's take a look at the prints. It's kind of exactly what we just talked about, but first we created the uh, library called test Mongo Atlas. We added some files to it. 
we created the embedding vectors. In this case, there was 165 distinct blocks of information or chunks of text that were found in the various documents. Each one of those got, an, got a vector embedding created for it, and each one of those vector embeddings was stored in MongoDB Atlas. Then we can do the um, uh, semantic searches for salary. And in this case, we did uh, the search, and I guess we got three different locations from the same file, which I'll talk about um, salary. So let's jump back over to MongoDB Atlas and see what happened there. Um, if I go now to the collections tab, we're going to see we do now have some databases and some collections created. So let's just look at these in order. So the first database that was created, this was actually the uh, first uh, data use case we talked about at the beginning of the call. This is this this database called LLMware is used to store document information for various libraries and runtime data and things like that. So if you recall, our library name was Test Mongo Atlas. So if I look at this collection, this is going to show me all the information that was parsed out of my files. Um, and so this is actually very handy. You can come in here and you can see everything LLMware is extracting out of the documents. And um, yeah, you can poke around here and see, and see all of this information. Um, the second and maybe more interesting um, database that was created is this LLMware embeddings database. And in here, you'll see some collections get uh, created, perhaps with um, some odd names. Um, so this first one um, that's in here, and first and only, really, uh, beside this metadata collection, is called LLMware Embeddings. And then it's got, you can see the name of the library merged in here, as well as the name of the embedding uh, uh, model that was used to create the embedding vectors. We do this so that we can support, for any given library, multiple uh, attempts at creating embedding vectors. And so you can use multiple different uh, embedding uh, models to create your vectors. You can store them all, you can compare and contrast. And so what you'll find as you create embedding vectors for libraries and change your parameters is you'll see collections like this getting created. Um, one for each combination of library name and uh, embedding uh, model. Um, and so if you look in here, uh, the, the documents that are in here will look pretty straightforward, actually. Um, if I come in here and look at um, any of the documents, you'll see uh, they're very simple. It'll have some information, some ID information that helps us refer these embedding vectors back to the chunks of information where they came from. But the actual embedding vector itself, you'll just see as a collection of hundreds of floating point numbers. Each one of these is, is a vector embedding. So um, yeah, it's, I think it's maybe useful for some very technical folks who want to poke around. You can look in here and, and see all this information. Otherwise, you can just sit at our API level and happily do embeddings and semantic searches and just uh, treat all of this as an implementation detail behind the scenes. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more features coming from LLMware. Thank you.